Hello everyone, Nina here with Waffle Flower Team to share our May release. This month we're headed to the beach and I'm here to share some fun beach umbrellas, seagulls and backgrounds to help you make waves. Let's start with some products that are easy to use and work really well together. I will start with the beach umbrella die and stencil. The dies all have a notch on the base that indicates where to line up with the arrow on the stencil. We recommend die cutting first and then stenciling so you can see exactly where you're adding the colors. I'm going to call this the waffle flower way from now on. Of course, you can use this set the traditional way by stenciling first and then die cutting. One thing I learned after I finished my video is that it's actually easier to stencil the beach umbrellas first and then cut them out. We found it easier to stencil the umbrellas at the upright position as indicated on the stencil and then align the dies to the stenciled images to cut them out. This way, you don't have to keep track of the corners after die cutting. Then let's move on to the adorable inquisitive seagull die. I die cut all the pieces from white cardstock, backed the eyes with some black cardstock, and then colored the beaks in orange and adhered them on top. Any imperfection adds visual interest to these beaks. There are also multiple ways to help you add the eyes to the seagulls. You can save the die cut circles and put them back on the seagulls with some washi tape on the back or just use a piece of black cardstock to back them up. Now, for the backgrounds, I started by cutting out a piece of A2-sized cardstock in light blue with the new wave texture die, and then ink blended in dark blue ink using the seafoam stencil. This stencil is so easy to use. You can stop with one layer of ink or rotate the stencil 180 degrees to stencil another layer for added depth. I love that all the uneven spots in my ink blending add to the realistic look of the sea. The only thing I wasn't sure about was adding the sandy texture using the stamps. Luckily, Galena sent over a video to share her tips on how to use it. We use stamping blocks to make an even impression for our stamps. But here, holding the stamp in your hand will give you more variation in the ink spots which provides a more realistic look. Mm -hmm. Galena also stamps more spots on top with white pigment ink to enhance the look even more. The wavy border die has two border shapes. I'm going to use both pieces. I want to share a trick I learned from Galena to make the beach look more realistic. My version is slightly different from hers because I started with pink cardstock, so I adhered the pink cardstock to a scrap piece of white cardstock, tear the edges, and then ink blended the edges. I still like to use our silicone mats for ink blending without a stencil. We call these the stencil mats, but that was before we discovered our grip mats. We'll try to come up with a new name for them. See the difference? I then stamped the grating and mounted the panel on the car base at a slight angle. I added the torn edges to the other pink piece and stamped a sentiment from the Beach Day Gradients stamp set. I used the leftover ink on my brush to help blend the letters in a little bit more. I decided to use green for my background on this card. And because I know the pink piece takes up a lot of room on the card, I only needed to cover about half of the piece. Look how pretty the siphon stencil looks, even just partially inked. Add my inquisitive seagull to the corner and trim off the excess. Trim and adhere the beach umbrellas to the card with foam tape for added dimension. I then used the leftover umbrella pieces on my first card to help add some colors to it too. So much fun! And I hope you have fun with these new products. I love the look of them sticking their heads out at the corners. It's like they're photobombing your scene. Yeah, I really enjoyed using the seafoam stencil. I love how easy it is to get beautiful results with very little effort. Also 
in this release, we have the Happy Seagull die. Which includes all the layers you need to create a happy seagull and, and buckets of his favorite treats. We found out the easiest way to assemble this seagull is to die cut the base layer from white cardstock and color the tail and legs using inks or markers, and then adhere the other die cut layers on top. It would be fun to cut out the bucket's handle from metallic paper for added shine and an even more realistic look. You may have noticed the wave texture die was used on many of our design team samples to help them achieve a more polished look. I also love how you can layer the Happy Waves panel die on top of this texture for even more depth on your card. Next, we'll have the new postage collage set. We're excited because we have not one, but two postage collage stencils the beach day stencils, and the 4th of July stencils. The 4th of July stencil is very straightforward. You can use one color for each of the three layers in the stencil. You can simply use the suggested red, white, and blue colors etched on the stencils, or have fun exploring the possibilities with your favorite coloring media, such as the white stencil paste Nina used here on her last stencil. You can also mix and match the stencil layers with the coordinating stamp set. We also love how Nina added the airmail border using the coloring stencil. All of the black sentiment strips you see here are from the Sub Sentiments 4th of July die cut sheets. By popular demand, we now have the block stencil for the original postage collage die. Just like the rest of our block stencils, this stencil has six window openings that match the die cut panel. You can ink blend individual backgrounds using these openings. If you already have the coloring stencil, you do not need this block stencil. The openings are exactly the same on both stencils. But if you like the airmail border, the coloring stencil is the one to get. If you already have the coloring stencil, you don't need this block stencil. The openings on each stencil are exactly the same. But if you like the airmail border, the coloring stencil is the one to get. I'm happy to see that we have block stencils for each of our waffle flower postage collage dies. Now let's talk about the Postage Collage Beach Days Stencil. Like the rest of the themed stencils, this one is designed to coordinate with the original Postage Collage die. I love all the mini scenes included in this stencil. They coordinate really well with the rest of the items in this release. Such as the beach umbrellas, the inquisitive seagulls, and the french fries as seen earlier in this video. Of french fries. If you place your order now through May 7th at waffleflower.com, you'll receive the small fries as your gift. Many of you enjoy these coordinating stamp sets that go with these themed stencils. Let's see how Galena uses the Beach Days stamp set to add visual interest to her card. With the beach theme, we've got our sea snails and seashells. We recommend you die cut first, then stencil with the sea snail die and stencil set. The guides etched on the stencil will help you line up the layers. comes in small packages like our seashells die. This is one of the more traditional die designs in this release. You get what you see, and all you need is some colored cardstock. There are detailed cut lines on each of the dies to help make them pop. Whether you are a beginner 
or an experienced card maker, you will enjoy this set when creating your beach themed cards. Although it may not show up well in this video, Galena used the block stencil for the backgrounds on this card. All the letters in the sand on the design team samples were created using either the Beach Days greeting stamp set or the Beach Days Hello foil plate. Galena has sent out a quick demo video on how to make the letters in the sand look with the Hello foil plate. Let's take a look. Talking about Sandy sentiments, we have a new addition to our Oversized Words series. Like the rest of the series, the Oversized Word Beach is available as a die and as a stem. I like how Karen ink blended the matte layer of the die to help make her Y letters pop. We are never fully ready for a day at the beach without a beach tote filled to the brim with everything you need for fun at the shore. We left the beach tote die simple so you can customize your tote bag with almost any texture dies you may already have. You can cut out your beach towel from pattern paper or use the pattern stamp from the coordinating stamp set. If you haven't noticed already, you can lift up the beak of the inquisitive seagulls to tuck almost anything under there. The sentiment Galena used is from the birthday wishes stamp set. The matching dies are also available separately or with a stamp set in a combo. Let's look at some design team samples. Pocket Slots die is what the design team uses to cut out the openings to hold the gift cards. There are three different styles you can choose from. Last but not least, we've got the Substance Sure die card to coordinate with all the beach themed items this month. Don't forget, if you place your order between now and May 7th, you will receive the Small Fries die as a gift. And this adorable bookworm cross stitch pattern is now available in waffleflower.com. All products are linked in the description below. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you again soon. Bye! Bye.